Well, there we go. Good morning. Thanks for joining us for this virtual job spotlight kicking off information technology this month. My name is Lynn April and I'm with the CISA 8 uh, consortium that is also uh, made up of NWTC and Allison Bowie is here with me this morning to man the chat along with CISA 7, the Anope Youth Apprenticeship Consortium, UWGB and Inspire Northeast Wisconsin. And our guests for today on this first IT day are Todd Whiteneck, who is Chief Information Officer with Cellcom, Mike Bianco, Director of Information Security at CISSP, and Brandon Vincent, Network Administrator at KI. Just a reminder of, oh, there we go, our March, our March spotlights for IT for next week. We will uh, be hearing from uh, Systems Manager for Skyward, Operations Director at EO Johnson, and Chief Technology Officer at Kerber Rose. Our norms for today, just a reminder that the meeting is being recorded and will be broadcast through Inspire Northeast Wisconsin after the event. Uh, everyone is muted and their video capabilities are turned off just to eliminate distractions, but we do want to hear from uh, especially any students that are joining us today through the chat if you have any questions. Um, I'll be sharing the presenters slides on my screen. And if you do leave the meeting, you may not be able to get back in, although I will be trying to keep an eye on uh, the waiting room as we go forward here. And we don't anticipate needing to do this, but we do have the ability to remove anyone from the meeting if they're being distracting. So we're gonna jump into our first speaker this morning, and that is Todd Whiteneck with uh, Cellcom, the Chief Information Officer at Cellcom. So Todd. Well, good morning, thank you, Lynn. I appreciate the introduction. Um, as Lynn said, my name is Todd Whiteneck, and I'm the CIO for and the VP of IT at Cellcom. Um, you can, I can't see if you have the first slide. Oh, you do. Excellent. Uh, well, this is where I work. This is basically the building. Probably most people uh, pass this going up and down 41, uh, if traveling through to Pier at all. Next slide. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time talking about my job, what it is now, and then go and share with you some of my background, how I got here, kind of a, a little bit of a history of me in terms of uh, how I got into IT. Next slide, please. CIO is an acronym for Chief Information Officer. It's, it's kind of an old title. It's been around a long time. Um, the word information doesn't make as much sense anymore. It used to always be thought of as managing the company's information. However, being a CIO these days or really a chief uh, something or another of any company or an officer in that matters really means uh, being one of the people running the company. In my case, I run everything that is essentially IT related. So today, my job is 100% about software, uh, computers, and leading the team that does all the work within telecom to make things work. Next slide, please. As you know, these days, everything we do is based on using computers. Of course, that includes mobile phones. This is very true for cell phone employees as well. Everything about their jobs is based on either using computers, working on computers, and or phones. As most of you know, there's a lot more to cell phones than just texting and running apps. Although every cell, com, or every cell company pretty much sells the same phones, how they actually work is not exactly the same. Each company has to write a whole bunch of software to make it work. Right? They have to write software from how the phones get activated, when you buy it, to just how they send text and how it uses the actual data that you have. It all has to be configured on a, on a per carrier basis. Each company is a little different. At Cellcom, it's the IT software engineering teams that writes all these apps for the phones, code that works on the network to make it work on the network, cell sites, the, basically the whole internet websites, everything that is software related. It even includes the cash registers that are in our stores. It is all written by employees right here in De Pere, uh, Wisconsin. At the same time, every employee has a laptop as well. And we all need to make that work. So IT is involved with buying all those computers. We set them up, we maintain them. We write the applications that run on them, like I said. Basically, IT has also enabled us all to work from home, right? Just like any other company, when the pandemic hit, there was a bit of a scramble to try to figure out how to get everyone work from home. And it was IT that kind of led that charge to make that all all that happened. Almost half of our team at Cellcom writes code. 
And the other half basically maintains all the servers, the laptops, our internal network, and almost all of the applications that we buy. Next slide, please. I don't want to just read just a list of positions I had, so I thought I'd tell you a little bit how I got to where I am. Um, believe it or not, I was not born an IT person. I was just another kid. In fact, had someone gone back in time and when I was in high school and said, you know, you're going to be a high-level IT person, there aren't going to be flying cars, there's no space travel, things like that, I would have laughed at him. Of course, I'm not going to be an IT person, and there will be flying cars. But here, here we are. When I was in high school, and I'm not really going to tell you about when that was, but yes, we had computers then as well, so not that long ago. But I didn't know much about them. I, had, I didn't know anyone who even had one. In fact, before my senior year, I didn't even know that I was going to go to college, no less major in computer science and engineering. Most of my family, everyone that I knew around me was in construction-related fields. And that I realize now about IT people, they have plenty in common with construction people. And there are a few things they don't have in common. In fact, I discovered over the years that most people, and whether they're in IT, they're in engineering, or in the sciences in general, tend to be like this. For example, when I was a kid, I really liked to build things, right? To figure out how things work. And for me, especially things that are electronic in nature. I pretty much loved any kind of gadget that had anything to do with uh, electronics. And it drove my parents pretty much crazy all the time. Right? I was always collecting this doodad or that and figuring out how to take it apart or get it to do something, wire it up. My father just said that it, I just like to mess with electronic gadgets. And of course, my mom always worried that I was going to burn down the house at any minute. Right? She <laughs> always running around going, I'm going to burn down this house. But luckily, that never happened. Once all my friends started driving, it even got worse. Right? I got my first car, and the first thing I did is I had to wire everything up wired lights, speakers, amps, the whole bit. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I had much more in money and amplifiers and speakers than my car was actually worth. So turns out I ended up being pretty good at it, ended up getting a job actually as a local car uh, installer shop and did that for my last couple of years of high school. Believe it or not, I was actually uh, in auto shop in high school because I really thought cars was my future. And it was actually a shop teacher, believe it or not that told me I need to start taking computer classes at the local tech school, right? And for me, that was an amazing place to get my first look at computer science classes. My senior year, I started taking classes at the tech school. And I remember being completely amazed how computers worked. And I thought, wow, I'm getting pretty good at this. Maybe there's, you know, I should consider doing this. And after about a year, after that last senior year of doing that, and I don't know how many hours talking with financial aid people, I decided to, um, apply to a four-year school major in computer science. Next slide, please. And I need a simple list. After graduation, my first job was a software engineer. And I still think of myself one to this day. And I still write code. I remember those first few weeks mostly thinking, holy crap, I have no idea what I'm doing. Everyone else around me knows what they're doing. They know everything. Someone's going to figure out that I am completely clueless. For a good amount of time, that first job was just figuring out how a particular software package worked. Right? They just said, play with it, figure it out. And then you need to start testing parts of it. So I started testing software. I was given tasks to perform, to find things that, that didn't work, that they were supposed to. They would give me ideas of how they were supposed to work. And I had to figure out why they were broken. And then I'd take that information to the more senior people and tell them what I found. And sometimes they'd even listen to my suggestions. It wasn't long before I was asked to start fixing them. From there, I started to get assigned work, add new functions to software, and I continued on that for years. Eventually, I was designing major parts of the software, right? assigning tests to other people's. Now, this time, it was me asking the newbies to test it and see if they could find things wrong with it, come and tell me what they thought the problem was. By this point, I was a software engineering team lead and when I was responsible for all sections of the software. That kind of continued again for years until all the systems were my responsibility. Next thing you know, I'm managing multiple groups of software engineers and lots of different software applications and what seems like not that long ago, managing the entire IT organization. So here's my advice. 
no one is born an IT person or computer scientist. It's about doing what you like, figuring out how to get good at it. It's more about how you think. It's about how you solve problems. It's about liking solving problems and doing so with other people. It's about it's not about being a computer genius. You don't have to be one. I also want you to know that there are multiple ways to get into IT. There is, there's no single way to do it. If you like to figure out how things work, you like to tinker with them or figure out how to fix them, or maybe you just like to build things or put things together, then I would say you probably already have what it takes to be an IT or an engineer. I'm just saying. And that's all I really wanted to talk about. And I'm open to any questions you might want to ask me. All right, great. Um, I do have a question, uh, especially in the, the past year that we've had uh, during the pandemic, did the company need to make changes or upgrades to accommodate the huge shift that we saw to virtual work and virtual oh, learning? Yes, for certain. You know, most of our uh, work from home was for kind of just when people were sick or had uh, other things they had to do. They really, it's kind of a stopgap method. Now all of a sudden, and I kind of alluded to this a little bit, what I was talking is so much of software development and IT work is a collaboration effort that you really have to work um, closely with the folks. And that got a lot harder, um, you know, everyone being stuck in their basements like I am. And uh, so collaboration tools, right? We're having to be on Microsoft Teams. So we had lots of upgrades around that, shared whiteboarding, to be able to share documents, to look at each other's screens and look through things at the same time. Um, so yeah, it was a, a little painful at first, you know, just pandemic in general, people getting used to that. But then we had to, you know, figure out ways to allow people to work together as teams, each of them being, you know, stuck in their houses. Mm -hmm. um, I love the employability skills that you mentioned that really are transferable from one area to the next, things like problem solving, critical thinking. You know, if you're a student that that is interested in that or can do that well, um, there are lots of areas that you can go into, but computer science is definitely one of them. Allison, do we have questions in the chat? I am not seeing any questions, but I have a question for you, Todd. And I, I'll try to, I think it makes sense in my head. <laughs> um, you mentioned uh, writing code and uh, writing apps. Mm -hmm. Once I, when I think of that, I think of it like it's a foreign language. Is Does it change or once you learn language that language that's stagnant and that's the language to yeah. write code um no that's a very good question um it, and it kind of is like a foreign language right for most people when you look at it it doesn't make much sense the interesting thing about programming languages is they're very well structured right there's no exceptions to the rules they work kind of one way right? unlike english right um and once you kind of get the hang of it, believe it or not, you start thinking that way. You know, people say when you, you know, you've really learned a foreign language when you start dreaming or, or thinking in that language. And that is also true, I think, for programming languages, right? It's not uncommon that when you're sitting there staring at someone, you know, and they think you're, you're engaged in conversation, you're going through your head and, and writing code in your head. And it, it does happen. Um, I could say that I, I've woken up in the middle of the night sometimes, you know, writing code in my head. So you do tend to think. Um, in terms of uh, does it change? Yeah, languages evolve. They add things to them, uh, ways that they work. And language are also a little bit different from natural languages in that uh, different languages are designed sometimes to, to solve particular problems. So um, there could be different languages depending on the type of problem or type of computers you work on. But they, they're all very similar. So. That's great. And thanks for having the, that picture of the old, one of the first computers, because I had one of those when I was little. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> I was laughing about the 8-track tape. I definitely yeah. I have put, one of those. <laughs> put some things in there for the old people. And uh, yes, I, uh, yeah, I installed a few 8-track stereos in my day. So. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. We yep, will. You're, you're welcome. Move on to our next speaker, and that is Mike Bianco, who is Director of Information Security at CISSP. So, Mike. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you, Todd, for, uh, for your input. I, I uh, want to echo some of the sentiments that Todd said. I actually, I work for Skyward, and the CISSP is a, uh, 
just a, a certification in informa information security. So just to uh, clarify that, but um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide and I'll, I'll talk a bit about uh, um, the, the things that I wanted to talk about today. I just wanted to talk about, you know, getting into IT, you know, there's a lot of different routes and, um, you know, I, information security is, is definitely a growing part of IT and that, uh, you know, security just, there's, there's a lot of, you know, bad actors out there and information security is all about protecting the information of a company. So, um, you know, managing it and protecting it. Sometimes that falls upon the same people or the same team, uh, same team. Um, but more and more, a lot of companies are splitting that out where information security um, is a department and there are people like me that specialize in that. So um, I took a path to get to where I am and go ahead and go to the next slide and I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, so I grew up in a small town uh, near Wisconsin Dells named uh, Waniwak, Wisconsin. So um, if you live in rural uh, Wisconsin or if you live in a big city, it doesn't matter. Your, your path um, you know, to IT can be the same. Um, certainly, I, I never envisioned myself being in IT, and I, I also found myself very interested in, in problem solving and building things. And, and um, similar to Todd, I, I love to put in stereo systems as well. And, and once my friends learned that I had, had figured out how to do that, then they would, uh, after they bought their stereos, they would bring them to me. So, um, but I enjoyed it. I like to do that. So, um, uh, after school, I went to a uh, two-year uh, technical school in Madison, so Madison Area Technical College, and uh, I earned a two-year degree in electronics, um, so I wasn't initially focused on IT. We were more focused in electronics on circuit board design and some of the more of the hardware-oriented things, um, but I also had classes in programming and touched upon like networking and things like that, and, and I really enjoyed the networking course. And, and what I mean by networking is just hooking computers together, getting them to talk to one another, um, you know, transferring files between one computer or the other, um, things in a, a client server type relationship. Um, so that was very interesting to me. So I, I uh, applied for jobs in that field and uh, um, that's what led me to where I am now. Um, I, uh, it's probably unusual in my field that um, I've been with one company my whole life. Uh, my whole professional career. Um, so I started in 90, 1997 after college and um, I worked my way up from an IT consultant who was going on site doing, um, you know, computer work, fixing computers, printers, all that kind of stuff up through like a team leader and then uh, branch management. And then um, eventually I was the director of my department. Uh, and then that moved to, uh, two years ago, I moved to just information security. So now I focus more on just the security aspect. And, and that's been very interesting because um, it has, uh, it does definitely, anybody who is in IT has to take security seriously. Um, meaning that it's, it's a part of your everyday job thinking of, okay, when I, if I put a new service out there or a new website, you know, I got to make sure it's secure. I got to make sure people that aren't supposed to get into it cannot. Um, so it's just a different line of thinking and that, um, you know, making sure things are secure. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out as far as like, you know, my, my career is that um, if you find a good company um, and you feel comfortable and they, and they promote within and, uh, you know, you know, it doesn't, a lot of times people in my field like to job hop. I have a lot of friends in that field and they've moved from job to job um, and maybe have experienced a higher salary by doing that or a quicker salary increase just because they were able to, to move and get more money, but maybe not necessarily happiness. So you don't necessarily have to, to job hop to get to the top. Um, you can stay with a company, especially one that promotes within and, and really is um, uh, really uh, likes that that the fact that you're um, you're devoted to that company. So um, go ahead and move to the next slide. Um, when I talk about information security, there's there are ways to get in um, as entry level. Um, security is one of those areas where there are um, you can work yourself up through IT to get experience. Um, experience is a big thing in security, which if you're just starting out, you you can't. You can't just gain experience. You have to start off. So you might start off in IT, 
Um, otherwise, the entry level positions in security are called a security analyst. Um, there's usually different levels of that. Um, and then that would move up to a security architect where you're more working on the designs of security systems. And then common management positions would be like a, a CISO, which is a chief information security officer or a, or a director like I am. So um, there are a number of security related certifications out there. I've listed a few on the screen just to, just to give you an idea if you go out and, and Google any of those like uh, um, the one that I um, have the CISSP, it's a mouthful, but uh, you can find information on those and, and employers definitely like to see that type of commitment um, in the IT world if, if you're seriously considering that. Um, certainly you would want to do schooling, um, but in addition to that, you know, you can, you can earn certifications that will definitely help you in the long run. Go ahead and move to the next slide, please. Um, security covers a lot of different areas in what they call domains. Um, I've listed in some here, but it can be uh, information security, but it also delves into stuff like uh, development security. You know, if you're developing software, there's security aspects to that, or um, you know, the security of, of your assets. Um, there's just a lot of different areas that it covers, and it can even delve into physical security. You know, how do you keep people out of your systems physically, your security of maybe your data center or something like that. So there's, there's a lot that it branches into. Uh, go ahead and move to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, a typical day uh, at Skyward is, uh, you know, we, um, we're always evaluating security uh, vulnerabilities that are announced by different companies. Um, for instance, um, you know, Microsoft or uh, Google, they're always putting out uh, bulletins about security things that they've discovered. Um, so we respond to those and get those implemented into our own systems, though we're not vulnerable. Um, there's a lot of research um, that goes into it. You know, what is the best way to deploy something or get something updated? Um, and we work with a lot of technologies like firewalls and, and proxies and SIMs and intrusion prevention, just a lot of technologies trying to keep the bad guys out. And uh, um, there's also a lot of work with security policies. You know, not everything is a technology. Sometimes it's a written policy that says, you know, what you would recommend to your employees, like, um, like a clean desk policy per se is a good one. You know, don't leave confidential work on your desk um, because you don't know who would be in the office, you know, maybe after hours, you don't want that information exposed. So, um, so it delves into a lot of different areas. And, uh, yep, thank you. Um, one of the things we do focus on is uh, security training for employees. Um, I, I enjoy this aspect of my job is to be able to um, teach uh, employees, you know, what are the things to look out for, you know, the bad actors out there, or hackers, if you want to call them that, um, are always looking to take advantage of situations. So uh, phishing emails are still one of the biggest uh, roads into a company. Um, and phishing emails are things that have like malicious links and stuff like that. Um, because I work for Skyward and in school districts, um, I've seen some things that have happened to our customers, like um, getting schools getting tricked into paying a fake invoice to the hackers. So you know, sending they, they, through a series of fake emails and account takeovers, um, they've been able to trick people into sending money to a hacker's account. Um, you know, really unfortunate when those things happen and, um, you know, it's, it's it, but it does and it's, and schools are a big target, unfortunately. So um, we try to help uh, get our customers educated as far as how to protect themselves and our employees. Go ahead and move forward, please. Um, social engineering is a, is a big one that hackers use as well. Um, and that is just to get you to believe something um, using information they have maybe found on the internet. Um, it's pretty easy to find information about people from their social media accounts, Facebook, or, um, you know, whatever's out there, you know, might be on TikTok or something like that. But uh, hackers take advantage of that. And they use that you, to trick you into thinking something or putting urgency on something um, and, and get you to do something you might not normally do. Um, so again, this is all things that we train people what to look out for. Um, go ahead, one more. Um, a, a, Quick little story about a gentleman named Kevin Mitnick. Um, he uh, 
he was a, a hacker who uh, spent time in federal prison for hacking. Um, he calls himself the, the world's most famous hacker. Um, whether that's true or not, I, I can't say, but uh, he has since gone straight and uh, he is a chief, chief hacking officer for a company called Know Before. And they make very uh, good products, security awareness training um, for teaching people what to look out for. So he's a great example of if you are, you know, consider yourself a computer person and, and maybe have considered hacking. Um, it's, it, it's not something that's going to be a long term profitable career and I wouldn't recommend it because, you know, most of you can, you know, it's going to end up in a bad place, but there are legitimate things out there where you could be um, doing things like this person, Kevin Mitnick, where he he turned his career around and now is a very successful businessman. But learned the hard way by ending up in federal prison first. <laughs> he really did. And I hope that, you know, I hope that other people don't do that. But, you know, they say today's uh, hackers, and I've worked in school districts for 24 years, so I know there are some kids who like to push the limits a little bit. And I've, I've been involved in some of those incidents. But, you know, those same skills that that you use to push those limits can be used for good and further and, and have a really good career in IT without having to go down the wrong road. Great. So I have a couple of questions. Um, one is we hear very frequently the term cybersecurity. Is that the exact same thing as information security? Yeah, it really is. And, and the the terminology out there, there's there's information security, data security, cybersecurity, but yeah, it's really all falls in the same wheelhouse. Got it. Um, and thank you for listing those certifications and uh, to pointing out the importance of those. Do you know if there are any certifications uh, in IT that students can start working on while they're still in high school already? Yeah, the um, I know for sure the one that I have, the CISSP, has a junior program um, that they could start working on. And because to get the one that I have, you you have to prove that you have like five years of work experience. So, you know, high schoolers wouldn't be able to do that. But a lot of them have junior programs where they can get in, they can do an associate's program where they can work their way up to the full blown. And, and then um, there may be opportunities to get connected with somebody who has the uh, the certification already so they can kind of be a, a tutor on our, you know, underneath them. Great. Allison, do you have any questions in the chat? I don't see any in the chat, but I have a question. Um, how do you continue learning? Because I can't imagine like every day it must change for you. So mm -hmm. how do you keep up? <laughs> with the yeah. next hacker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and, and really anybody in IT is always learning. And, and that's something I, I find, you know, a great aspect of the job is, and, and I, I like to learn. There's a combination of ways you research. I mean, you know, networking with your colleagues is a big one. Um, you know, there's not any one of us who knows everything. We're not computer geniuses. We're taking, you know, good ideas from all sorts of people. Um, I get great ideas from reading, um, attending webinars and things like that from peers. And then also, um, you know, my team um, employees and stuff like that, we're, we're all learning from one another. So it's that networking aspect, um, as well as just having that curiosity and, and being able to, to do research on topics. But then you share that, you know, what you learn, you share with others, and it's, it's really a, a networking um, aspect to it. So I have one more question. Is the IT security function the same at a bank as it is at a hospital, as it is at a school? Well, it really should be. Um, you know, uh, security for some organizations like schools is it never used to be a concern or not as big as a concern, but unfortunately they've become a, uh, they're actually one of the number one targets right now, as well as hospitals. Um, banks have really been security minded all along, you know, and, uh, um, but when in the end, they should all look the same from a security program. It's just some, some organizations are still building their security programs. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. Thanks so much for your information today. And we will move on to our last speaker and that is Brandon Vincent, Network Administrator at KI. And I'm going to stop share and go to the speaker view so we can see Brandon. 
Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, again, my name is Brandon Vincent. Um, I am a network administrator, uh, support services team lead for a company called KI in Green Bay. Uh, KI manufactures furniture for uh, schools, businesses, healthcare, uh, college and university. Uh, so some of you that are in school right now, you might very well be sitting in a KI chair or a KI desk. Um, our, one of our largest markets is in schools. So, um, so that's what we do at KI. Um, I've been here, I've been at KI for going on 13 years now. Um, I started out here, just a little bit about my background. I started at KI as a help desk coordinator. Um, right out of school, actually, while I was still in college. Um, and then about two years after that, uh, a network administrator position uh, became available and I applied for it, not really thinking I was gonna get it uh, because I was, you know, I had very little experience at that point yet. Um, was just finishing up college. Um, but I thought, you know, this is that was the path that I was looking to take. Uh, so I went for it and I ended up getting it, which was really, really great. Um, I was super excited for it. Uh, and I've been doing that ever since uh, basically the last 11 years now. Um, and more recently, maybe within the last five years, um, uh, sort of a promotion, uh, maybe in addition to my current responsibilities. I also became a team lead for our support services team. Um, so that's kind of the path of, of the positions that I've had here at KI. Um, so to back up a little bit, um, kind of how I got started, uh, I guess a little bit similar to what Todd had talked about uh, when I was younger. Uh, my dad was a, a mechanic. Uh, a couple of my uncles were mechanics. Um, so I kind of got into cars uh, at a young age. Um, like to be out in the garage with my dad, you know, helping him work on vehicles, um, you know, taking things apart, putting them back together. And that kind of led into um, doing that with more things, you know, electronics, toys. If something was broken or not working right, I would, you know, start taking it apart. Um, and that just continued. And led me into um, wanting to go into computers and, uh, you know, learn how computers worked, um, you know, how they talk to each other, how to build them, repair them. Um, that's kind of what got me started on the path to uh, a career in this. Um, so after high school, uh, I went to, uh, to ITT Tech for four years, uh, which ITT is no longer around. But uh, at the time that I was there, um, it was they had, they had a really great program in uh, information system security and networking. Um, so I got a bachelor's degree from there. Um, and then while I was about two years into that is when I got hired here at KI on the help desk. Um, so that kind of got me, you know, got my foot in the door. Um, and in that position, you know, I answered, answered phone calls, uh, did, you know, tech support for the company, uh, for our internal employees, uh, in the office, our sales reps, things like that. Um, anything and everything, you know, that somebody can't log onto their computer, their accounts locked out or their audio isn't working on their laptop or, uh, you know, sales rep drop their laptop and crack the screen. And we had to get that, you know, worked out, get that replaced for him. Um, so just anything and everything you could think of, just, uh, you know, internal tech support, helping helping our internal customers with any problems they had. Um, you know, and then obviously we had second and third level support where if, if it was a problem that I couldn't solve or there was something, you know, an email issue going on or something at a higher level uh, you know, those, those issues would get passed off onto our second or third level support 
teams and, and then they would take care of the issue. Um, but the help desk is kind of the first level. And, you know, I'm sure you, you see that, you know, every company, every school, um, whether it's internal or maybe um, externally sourced, you know, has a help desk or a support desk um, where you kind of start when you have an issue. So those, and it, although I was only in that position for two years, um, I got a great deal of experience, um, you know, just in talking with different employees throughout the company. Uh, I, I learned a lot about the company, about what people do, different types of software um, and applications, um, all these different employees use. So that really gave me a, a wide view of how my company works, um, really kind of laid the groundwork for where I'm at today. Um, so like I said, now I'm a network administrator and um, I work with a team of administrators and, and engineers. Um, so my day-to-day -day, uh, job consists of actually quite a lot of things. Um, managing Windows servers, uh, managing our email, uh, internal software and applications, you know, how they connect, how people connect from the outside into our data center to access files, applications, websites. Uh, so kind of the day-to-day -day is a lot of, you know, managing all of that infrastructure, making sure things are updated and patched and accessible. Um, if there are issues with anything, you know, taking care of those. Um, I do a lot of work with deploying and upgrading software. Um, all of our computers, you know, as as was mentioned, and I'm sure you, you know, even in schools today, um, just about every person has a computer. So it's it doesn't matter if you're, you know, you work in finance or customer service or sales, um, and even IT. You know, just about every employee, at least in an office setting. Uh, works on a computer for sometimes, you know, the most, uh, the most part of their day. So uh, making sure all those systems are patched um, and updated, things are working correctly. Um, one of the things I like about this job is, you know, every day is a little different. Not, there isn't one day that's the same as, as the previous. So, you know, there's always different issues. Um, different problems to, to try and resolve uh, and when there aren't, you know, and it's not always um, problem solving, you know, that's, that's a lot of the job, but, you know, outside of that, you know, there are other things like, uh, you know, researching new products, researching, um, you know, security, and there's, there's so, so much revolves around security and, you know, securing a company's information um, all your assets, so just uh, involving, you know, a lot of research and, um, you know, looking at upgrading software, hardware, things like that, just kind of looking at, we're always looking ahead at what's next, you know, what's new, um, should we be upgrading something, can we, um, so, um, just one quick thing I will add um, on top of that. Obviously, you know, if, if it's something that you're interested in, uh, there's there are so many different positions and career paths available in IT, whether it's software, hardware, um, networking, security. Uh, there are just so many things available out there. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in it, do a little bit of research on your own, kind of get your feet wet. Um, see what you might be interested in and, and go from there. Great. So yeah, you mentioned a lot of different things that you do as a, a typical day, although there really isn't one. Um, what, mm. would, what would be the most fun part of your job? Like something that you would think in the morning, yes, I get to do this. Um, boy, I would have to say um, like starting on a new project, whether it's implementing a new phone system or, you know, upgrading um, to a new version of software, that really gets me excited. The sort of the, uh, 
there's a lot of work leading up to that, you know, to get ready for a project like that. But when you start something and, and you work on implementing something new, um, that's a lot of fun for me. And it's not just the, the technology aspect of it. It's, it's, you know, putting together training and policies around that and, and educating our users within the company and, you know, on how to use it. That's, that's exciting to me. Great. Allison, do you have a question? I certainly do. <laughs> um, I think it's interesting that all three mentioned their um, like of cars um, or, or just that, I mean, cars was a common theme or the, the cassette <laughs> uh, player within them. But so I just thought that was interesting. I was curious, um, what, what changed in your role a year ago? Um, when COVID started it well um, once we figured out we're all at home kind of thing what changed oh for you um, <laughs> everything <laughs> honestly it was you know obviously we all you know saw things in the news in January into February you know um, but at the time we're like oh that's you know that's on the other side of the world I'm, I'm not really worried about it right now. And then, you know, we kept hearing about it more and more. And then it was like in March, all of a sudden one day, you know, uh, our CIO came in and, and we had kind of a quick huddle and we're like, okay, we, this is serious. We really need to start thinking about our game plan. Um, and within a, literally a, a matter of a week, we, you know, we had people working on documentation, training documentation. We were setting up, you know, making sure all of our, our employees' computers were set up and had the ability to work remotely. And we moved, you know, 90% of our office workforce offsite within a week and sent everybody home. And um, while it was, it was stressful and uh, several long days, uh, it was actually, it was really rewarding and um, that we accomplished something like that. Uh, so, yes. Yeah. I would hope it's a once in a lifetime thing, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a learning experience. And uh, uh, well, you got the playbook now, so. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. And I think that'll change, you know, companies' outlooks on, on working remotely and how they can accomplish that. And uh, it just kind of shows that, you know, people are able to be very flexible and, you know, move around within the company or, or, work remotely if needed so which is is great i do have one more thing uh just in terms of that entry level you talked about the help desk being entry level or the tech support mm -hmm. is that and i think that goes hand in hand with what um everyone else talked about too is just you need experience in mm -hmm. it in order to move on but help desk and uh, that technical support seems to be um, actually rather valuable because you learn about everybody else in the company. So right. I just wanted to highlight that. Um, I thought that was really a, a good point to point out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and for me, you know, coming into it, I, I saw it as my way in, you know, sort of my foot in the door um, to the company and, um, you know, didn't necessarily look at it as a stepping stone, but I didn't realize at the time how much I would learn about the job and about the company um, through doing that. So, you know, even if it's not something that you're necessarily looking to do for the rest of your career, you know, any ways in that you can get into. And one thing I didn't mention is, you know, even if, if computers interest you, technology interests you, and you can help, you know, family and friends with, with technology at home, um, you know, that gives you experience. Uh, internships, if you can find an internship that's available, whether it's, you know, in high school or college, um, definitely take advantage of any opportunities like that, just, just to get experience. And, and that kind of helps you learn if it's, you know, what you want to continue doing or if you want to kind of change paths a little bit. That's great advice. And there are a lot of districts um, with their IT departments that look for students, um, especially during the summer to help like turn over machines, get them ready for the next year. So that might be a great opportunity for students to kind of get that experience. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.
we will go back to share screen and finish up here. Just a reminder that next week, we've got three more speakers uh, who are going to be joining us to tell us about their positions in IT. And as always, we love to hear from our students and teachers and parents even that have been joining us. So you did get an evaluation survey link this morning. Please send us feedback so that we can make sure that we are meeting your needs. So that is all we have for today with our, our IT. Thank you again to all of our speakers and have a great rest of your week. Thank you, Lynn.